Good evening and welcome back to World of Tanks. It's Jaeger 262 and as most of you know today is the 75th anniversary of D-Day or of the beginning of Operation Overlord which was the massive allied amphibious naval and aerial assault on the French Normandy coast which brought the war to an end two years earlier than predicted it is one of the most ambitious military operations and one of the most famous. For anybody who doesn't know, now you know, it's June 6th was when the beaches were hit. And every day after that was D-Day 1, D-Day 2, D-Day 3, and so on and so forth. Which are what you saw in the missions replicated that. But our D-Day 1 started two weeks ago to get this, the Sirocco skin. Now... If you have completed all the missions, or if you haven't, you should be able to do all of them up till, the, I think, midnight tonight to get it. Um, not entirely sure, but once you do, I don't have it now. But let me see if I can. I'm not going to rewatch it. Uh, wait for it to load. At the end of all of it, you'll get this little notification that you've not only gotten the Sirocco skin, but because you did it, you now have completed and they have this special declassified document for you on D-Day 14. And what it is, is a really great five minute video on Operation Overlord, the logistics of it, the armored vehicles involved, obviously it's World of Tanks. And so they kind of break down like the Dieppe raid, how the British failed there, but were able to successfully land tanks. They talk about the Sherman DD, which I was talking about, which are the Shermans with the waiting gear on the side, basically turning them into amphibious tanks. Uh, 29 of those actually launched on the Omaha sector, the American sector, during D-Day, and all but two were sunk. Not due to enemy action, I don't think. They just were heavier, and the waters were way deeper in that area than the Americans had believed. And... We also landed these Shermans, the waiting Shermans, which are the vehicles I wanted to see as a premium tank that I was mentioning, which have these giant two snorkels. And this is actually a recreation of an actual war photo taken at Omaha. And obviously all the missions were based off the five sectors, the three British and the two American. That's all the video was about. And they did do this really cool thing at the end, which I thought they weren't going to do. Most people talk about the British and the Americans. But also, they really quickly went over the Belgians, the French, the Polish, and the Dutch involvement in D-Day. And there's also other nations there, like the Anzac troops and the Canadians, which are part of Anzac. Who without, whom without Operation Overlord could not have happened. And I thought that was really cool. Those nations are usually just kind of like understood for stories that they were there, but are overlooked. And so, this vehicle actually represents a real French vehicle involved in the D-Day operations. It did not land on the beaches of D-Day during the initial fighting. It entered with the other armor afterwards and was able to fight through the pocket with the Free French Forces, which is why you see the Free French Forces symbol represented here. And I actually have a viewer in Belgium who gave me some pretty interesting information on the man who was in this vehicle and some facts about it and why it was actually on the beaches and that's because the RBFM which I'm not going to get into how to pronounce that in French is basically the naval branch of the French military and they had a series of armored vehicles involved just like when the British Royal Navy had their own armored vehicles to test and so actually once the war broke out that military arm was still operating alive and well in England and they got their hands on an M10 and some of the armored vehicles and actually fought alongside the allies with those so that's really cool thank you for the info and you kinda see that happening with the Belgians and the Polish with the Polish Black Devils pushing deep into the British sectors during D-Day and so it's just a really cool video to talk about the operation what happened and give you a little bit of history behind this skin here it's quite nice and that's pretty much it it was that's all the video was that's all this is going to be about i'm going to do some more gameplay in the sirocco 
but which is how I'm going to refer to this M10 from now on by the way so every time you hear me in the Sirocco it's going to be the M10 RBFM but as you know from my other videos that's a mouthful for me to say so I'm just going to say Sirocco from now on hopefully you guys will get to watch that video or you'll get to at least pick up the M10 if not both the M10 and the Sirocco skin that was it this is just a short intro video I will be continuing into while I do some gameplay just an issue that I've been thinking about a little bit in the game recently ever since the news about the battle stats came out and stat shaming so this is gonna be kinda of like a soapbox sort of video where I'm gonna get out here and talk about some things or actually I'll make it a second video the video after this will be a soapbox video so if you don't want to see it you don't have to it's not really important but I will be putting all my b-roll footage of me in the Sirocco into that video and I'm just gonna be talking about basically the world of tanks community um, players how I personally play video games and why and just the different attitudes that are brought into the game that are not really problematic but difficult for newer players to adjust to or why people so many people, if you know my Armored Warfare videos, and you're from my Armored Warfare community, a lot of people playing that game left World of Tanks because it was a toxic community, and whether or not I believe that's true, just it's going to be a video about that kind of stuff and where the battle statistics, and I mentioned a term last video called stat shaming. For anybody who's new to the game, I'm going to explain that. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I'll get into how that works and why I'm still in World of Tanks and why I think that maybe it's not all bad and just kind of break it down so again it's a soapbox video it's kind of preachy you don't have to watch it I hope you do I hope a lot of new players watch it because it is something I've wanted to talk about for a while now but if not at least the one video I'll have up today will be just this Operation Overlord and Sirocco skin if you like it please give it a thumbs up if you want to get notified for the next video or any videos in the future please subscribe to the channel and as always thank you so much for watching and thank you to anybody like my viewers before, uh, for giving me any information about the vehicles, the game, your experiences. Um, he also gave me some hints on how to better play it. And really love that. I heard a lot of you guys from the Black Market event talking about the Death Star and really enjoying that tank destroyer and all kinds of stuff. So love interacting with you guys and hope you'll continue to interact with the channel, continue watching, continue supporting me and getting to know each other as well by these discussions. So thank you so much, and as always, see you next time.